I hope you all are doing well. I am honored, excited today. In the words of the great prophet Usher from Atlanta, it's seven o'clock on the dot. I got my drop top. It's about to go down tonight. Rock family, we have been blessed. We entered a new series. Let's open up with the word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless you. We honor you. Your loving kindness, it's better than life. God, you inhabit the praises of your people. This is a day that you have made. We will rejoice and we will be glad in it. We declare victory. We declare joy, peace like a river, a love that overflows. God, bless our time tonight. God, I pray, Lord, that you would deposit something inside of us that will produce a perpetual harvest. We thank you in advance for the words that were spoke that will be spoken this evening. And God, I pray, Lord, that you will enlighten us, empower us, and enrich us through our conversations. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What's happening, Rock Family? Click like, click share. It's it's gonna be a good night tonight. I miss you all tremendously, tremendously. I'm having rock church withdrawals, but I, I just thank y'all for coming out to the Rock family reunion that we had, the virtual family reunion. Thank you for the way we got to honor mothers on Mother's Day. We all shout out Lady Nakia and the entire, entire Rock Women's Ministry. Nailed it, killed it. And we are embarking on a new series. We started it on the first Sunday of May entitled, It'll Never Be the Same Conversations. That series is taken off. Uh, our, our first message dealt with something called Remnants and Revivals. And it was impressed on my heart to bring in some of the most profound, prolific voices in the kingdom of God to have conversations uh, outside of the podium, outside of the pulpit. And tonight we are blessed, Rock Family. He hails from Atlanta, Georgia. He is the graduate of Morehouse College. He is the progenitor of the Young Leaders Conference. It has grown from 50 to over 5,000 registrants from 49 states. I don't know who this last state is that, that's holding out, but we're gonna find them and register somebody so we can say 50 states. Over 20 countries from around the world filling convention centers in 2019. History was made as the first faith-based conference to host five presidential candidates at one time. Rock Church, he is no stranger to us. We've been blessed by his ministry on multiple occasions. We all do a lot of likes, do a lot of hearts as we welcome Elder Mark Moore Jr. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What's going on, man? What's up, man? How are you? I am, I am great. Let me first say it is a pleasure to be with my Bay Area pastor and my <laughs> Bay Area church. I've been saying it for a year now. Uh, Maybe longer than that. Time is flying. But I am so sincerely grateful, man, for you, for your ministry, for your amazing wife, your family, your church, man. And I am just honored to be with you tonight, bro. The 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 pleasure is all ours. We are overwhelmed with gratitude. Honestly, there are some relationships that are extremely organic. The first yes, time we picked you up from the airport, <laughs> it was like a, a Mary Elizabeth moment where it was like no words had to be spoken. It felt genuine, it felt authentic, and it's been consistent the whole time. Yes, I, I really have a great appreciation for that. Let's jump into it. We are doing a new series called It'll Never Be the Same. In light of COVID-19, in light of the pandemic, how there are adjustments and pivots that are critical for us to make as churches, as the body of Christ. With that said, in the midst of this pandemic, yeah, I've seen you and YLC pivot like crazy. Wow. I've seen yeah. young leaders prayer, quarantine's <laughs> got talent, young leaders revival, young <laughs> leaders book club, young leaders single chat, preachers podcast, <laughs> and I think I saw Law and Order. YLC. I could. I might have been late at night. It hasn't dropped yet. Don't tell me about that. We we have a production Friday. I think I saw. I think I saw Law and Order YLC, oh, where man. you were a detective. I thought it was based in Atlanta. It was a whole thing. Uh, with that said, discuss how you were able to pivot so effectively in the midst of the pandemic. Yes, sir. Um, I think that the word you used in your description is really, I don't think I know 
that that's a word that God gave me. Uh, mm-hmm. He told me that those who pivot will prosper. And it's been a word that I have been standing on uh, since this happened. Let's be very clear. Let's be very transparent. I know how you flow. Uh, I know how the Rock Church is. You guys, you you keep it 100. And so if I can speak freely and frankly, um, while we are absolutely devastated by the natural effects of this pandemic, the physical effects, the emotional uh, trauma that comes with people that you know and people you know who know people that are losing loved ones and friends and coworkers and people in their churches and things of that nature. That is all traumatic. But there's another level uh, of this pandemic that I'm not sure everyone has spoken about as freely, and that's the financial impact that this has had on a lot of ministries and businesses and entrepreneurs and and all of that. And I'm going to be very honest. I hope you all will forgive me uh, for 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 speaking freely and being transparent. But I'll be very honest when I tell you that when this happened, keep in mind, I am blessed to serve in full time ministry. Uh, I have an itinerant calendar. I travel across the country, not simply doing ministry, but doing trainings and consulting and all of those things. And so I would be less than forthright if I did not acknowledge that when this broke out, when the airports are being shut down, when uh, events are being canceled, I saw 30, I think 36 engagements disappear in like two days. Uh, And of course, for those that, that that try to budget and be disciplined, all of that is an immediate loss of revenue. And so I'm thinking, God, what am I gonna do? How am I gonna how am I gonna make things happen? And that's when I got that word that if you pivot, you will prosper. And so I immediately begin to think, what else do I have in my bag yes. that I can use to not only sustain myself but benefit the kingdom? And, and I really think that what this pandemic has done in part is really force a level of creativity out of us that some of us, I'll be honest and say, I don't even think we knew we had it. I think that that, that much like uh, a lemon in, in, in a vice, uh, there's something that is coming out of us. And the good news is it's been there the whole time. Yes. We just never had to tap into it because we've been so accustomed to a normal routine. We've been accustomed. This is how I make money. This is how I do business. This is how I provide. This is how I operate. This is how I move. And then when something like this comes and everything that you have leaned on, everything that you thought you could count on, your fallback, what happens when your fallback falls apart? you got to tap into something else. And uh, I think really that it's an insult to the creator Mm. to say that we have his spirit. Yes. We have the spirit of the creator, not a creative, the creator. Right. Insult to claim his spirit and then be paralyzed by fear or 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 writer's block or just being stuck. Because if we really just tap into what he's placed in us, there's creativity there that we didn't even know we had. I want to I want to park in the creativity space for a moment. Yes, when sir. we began the series, we used it was Noah as a heuristic device to discuss how God will use a remnant to be the catalyst for revival. Yeah. And with that said, part of this new revival, in my estimation, it'll center around three C's. Christ, where it won't be implicit, it won't be universe, Jesus Christ explicitly, uh, creativity Mm -hmm. and collaboration. I love it. Discuss how you think those three C's can be critical in the creation of a 21st century revival. That, that's a phenomenal, a phenomenal breakdown. And, and uh, to be honest with you, I, I could not agree more. And I think that looking at those three C's, Christ, uh, creativity, all of that, I think that the order you put them in is significant in and of itself. Uh-huh. I think that it's important that we acknowledge that maybe part of this pandemic Maybe part of this 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 crisis that we are all living through, maybe part of it was designed to get us back in alignment to realize, oh wait, it, it is on Christ the solid rock. Yes, sir. Wait a minute. You mean all of the ground yes. risk sinking sand? You mean 
my, my job is sinking sand. Yeah. You mean my, my status, my degree, my income, all of, you mean all of that is really sinking mm. sand? I think that if we could find a way to squint hard enough and see a silver lining around this cloud, yes. I think that part of it would be that maybe we're being pushed back into the proper position to remember that Jesus is the foundation. Wow. He is not a way. He is the way. Yes. He is not a door. He is the door. He is not a, a way to just a better life. He is life. Yes. And so I think that Christ has to be the center of our focus. And, and I said it a moment ago, but I, I want to revisit it because I think it's so important that maybe we remember that this is a phenomenal outreach moment because people that are not active in their faith yes. have no choice, Pastor Forrest, but to acknowledge, wait, the stuff I've been leaning on is not solid. Yes. They have no choice but to acknowledge the stuff that I have put my trust in mm. is go away. My stock portfolio can be gone tomorrow. Yes. My 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 my, my calendar, my itinerary, my speaking engagements, whatever industry you're in can be gone tomorrow. And so Christ has to be the center. Christ mm. has to be the foundation. But when you then build on that. If we acknowledge uh, that, that Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, we have his spirit within us living, moving, operating today. If he is the creator and we have his spirit, then that should produce the second C that you li lifted, which is, again, creativity. Mm. What I said a moment ago, I, I hope that you guys heard me. And if you hear me, please share this because somebody on your timeline needs to hear this. I, I just yeah. think this is going to be a conversation that really helps people get free. So if you haven't shared it, shout out. I see some wow, see folk in the room. Y'all know what to do. Uh, let's share this real, real, real big. But the creativity piece has to be a, a, a focus for us in this moment because what I think is happening, and I don't say this uh, you know, to downsize or downplay rather any other generation or any other dispensation. But I really feel that the pieces on the chessboard are mm. being reshuffled. I really feel in ministry, in entertainment, in mm. business, across mm. the world. If those of you that study history will acknowledge that every so often there is e even naturally, even in our physical world, mm. every so many years, there's almost like the earth resets itself. Wow. Think about what I'm saying to you. Naturally, the, the earth right now I was listening to an, an, an article, reading an article the other day that talked about the fact that even in the midst of this pandemic, scientists are starting to acknowledge that the world is literally changing. Yes, They're right. acknowledging that there are places uh, that have had high pollution where there is no more pollution. They've acknowledged mm -hmm. uh, that there are endangered species that have been extinct or almost extinct for years that are suddenly starting to resurface. They're acknowledging that certain streams and bodies of water, the toxicity has gone down. It's almost mm -hmm. as if the earth is literally hitting a reset button. Mm. Look at ministry. Every so often, there's a reset and a changing of the guard. If you look at business and business models, yes, Blockbuster and Netflix, yes, here, uh, 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 Kodak and digital camera. Every so often, there's a major shift and a reset that causes everything to change. If you look even at our finances, and I know you'll understand and respect this, millionaires are made from different avenues in different generations. Mm -hmm. You go to the Carnegie's and the Rockefellers, they made millions off of industry, mm -hmm. off of steel and railroads and oil. Guess what? Nobody's getting rich off of railroads anymore. Right. You move on. What happens? People became rich off of technology and your Microsofts and all of these things. That has happened. We're in a different wave now. It's no longer hardware. It's apps. It's software. The new millionaires, many researchers suggest, are going to be made off of information and mm. off of education. Everything is changing. And this, brothers and sisters, saints and friends, <laughs> is why creativity is so important. You cannot survive in a future. Mm. Man, I'm, please hear this. Thank you, Jesus. You <laughs> cannot survive in a future if you only utilize tools that only okay. work in the past. Yes. I'm not just talking about ministry. There are many of you listening to us. Your business model, you got to get creative. 
Some of you all, I went to school. This is how you do it. That's great. That's how you did it. But guess what? Could it be that you were trained for a world that does not exist anymore? Wow. <laughs> Could it be that you were educated and disciplined and you were taught how to do things using an outdated rubric? What does that mean? You got to learn how to be creative. God, give me the grace to think outside of the box. Yes. Give me the grace and the and the comfort and the, the 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 push, the nudge, the faith to do something that's different. Because again, you cannot pivot if you're not willing to be. Let's, let's acknowledge, Mark Elder Moore. Let's acknowledge for a moment the risk involved with creativity. Oh that yeah. Means my ego is going to take a hit. That means I might look crazy. It means I might be misunderstood initially, but I'll be mimicked eventually. Mm -hmm. Talk about the risk it takes to be a trailblazer when there is no template to follow, the necessity to become the template, to become the rubric, and how much courage it takes to build arcs when you've never seen rain. You, you literally just went where I was about to go. Noah is the, in mm -hmm. my mind, Noah is the, the, the premier example of what it means to be obedient in the face of confusion. Yes. It, Noah is the perfect example. I preached Sunday for, for Spirit and Truth broadcast, and I talked about the fact that when Noah was instructed to build the ark, there are many uh, theologians that suggest, as you just said, that it had never rained before. Mm. So you have a man now that's being asked by an entity that he cannot see to do something that he's never seen yes. to prepare for something that he's also never seen. Yes. <laughs> I hear a voice from a God I've never seen asking me to build a vessel that I've never seen to prepare for an event that I've also never seen. <laughs> he is the ultimate trailblazer at this point because there's never been, not simply anything done just like this. There's never been anything done almost like this. God yeah. says, I want you to do this. And here's, we, 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 we tend to read the Bible and we think that events took place uh, just in the span of time it took us to turn the page. Yes. He was building this ark for decades. Yes. No, he's preaching mm. the same message. I'm talking to some preachers on here for decades <laughs> and nobody's listening. Uh, he preaches the same message. He's building the same art for all of these years. And at the end of it, talk about frustration and burnout. He couldn't get nobody to get on board but his family. Right. <laughs> you talk about feeling like you wasted your time. He said all of this work and nobody believes in him. Nobody sees what he's doing is necessary. But the only reason for that is because, hear me, he was preparing for a future that the world had not seen yet. Wow. And every trailblazer on here, you need to take heart tonight because some of you all, you're wondering, am I crazy? Have I missed it? it was, was I wrong? Was it just a bad dream? Maybe, I, surely I didn't hear God. Could it be that he's just preparing you for something that people don't know they need yet? Yes. But the beauty of it is, just like with Noah, it is with you. If you keep building, I promise you, what you're working on will soon be necessary. Woo! <laughs> what you're working on, everybody's going to need it in a minute. They yeah. just don't know they're going to need I remember a story, Pastor Foster, of Henry Ford, great automotive, automotive yes. uh, um, innovator. Uh, you know, he's responsible for mass production and, you know, founder of the American auto industry and takes a lot of credit for that. But I remember, I'll never forget. Uh, a quote from him. Someone yeah. was interviewing him and this thing blessed me. They said, I know, know it. Mr. Ford, how did you handle, you know, the demand from people and, and what role and what weight did you put on what people wanted out of your cars? And he said these words that changed my life. Yes. He said, if I would have asked people what they wanted, uh -huh. they would have asked for faster, faster horses. <laughs> that, that, that'll preach Mr. Ford. <laughs> what he was saying was, People don't really know they need this. Yes. They've never seen this. Yes. There are so many people that are members of the Rock Church, Bay Area, so many people that are connected to this church. Some of you haven't joined yet. I don't know what you're waiting on. Some of you are looking and, and you feel this uneasiness for your business or ministry. It could be that God is preparing you for something that we're going to need. We just don't know it yet. Now, here's the downside, Pastor Christopher. Yes. The downside is 
it's so easy to throw the towel in when we don't get support. Yes, sir. Because we feel like, man, th th maybe they don't want it. Maybe I missed it. Maybe maybe I should do what they're doing because their way is getting support. Their model is getting likes. Their thing, people are flocking to it. But I want to remind you that you can't afford to be distracted because you don't have a roadmap to follow. Yes. What God spoke to me and told me one time is that the reason I don't have a roadmap is because he's using me to write the map. I'm yes, drawing sir. a map that somebody else is going to use behind me. Yes. So some of you all, you got to tap into creativity because you might be Noah and we're going to need your ark. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> your business is an ark. Yes. Your idea is an ark. Your book is an ark. An ark is nothing more than a place of safety that we can run to and, and find refuge. Some of you all are sitting on arcs and wondering why people in your city are drowning. <laughs> You're wondering why people in your community, in your family, in your social circle are drowning. And you haven't factored in that God gave you the blueprint for an ark that you refuse to build yes. because you're trying to do what everybody else is doing. Yes, and it becomes problematic when we're looking from affirmation from the people we're assigned to save. You may not get wow. reciprocity. You might reap what you sow, but you won't reap it where you sowed it. And so Noah is preparing this ark for people who eventually don't even know they need it yet. That's powerful. The part oh, yeah. that I steal from that Noah thing is Noah had enough in the ark to start all over again. That many of us get stuck in this season of survival yeah. I survived the flood. I survived it. It's almost as if we don't know our identity independent of our trauma. So when I come out of the ark, I'm so busy talking about the flood that I survived that I'm not talking about the new earth, the revival that I'm responsible for starting. So in our church, we try to proclaim that survivors are starters. Wow. I like that. Take on the responsibility of whatever trauma you experienced. If you've experienced church hurt, become a church healer. Yeah. If, if a ministry drops you, be a part of the ministry to make sure that nobody else gets dropped. Wow. With that said, I find that. So so there's a book. I don't know if you've read it. Bill Hybels, you probably have. Mm -hmm. uh, called Holy, mm -hmm. Discontent. Holy Discontent. Yes, um, that, he, he lifts this concept. The Rock Church is based on everything I hated about church. Yeah. Our model is based on things that I thought were superfluous that yeah. I couldn't trace back to the book of Acts. So yeah. you won't find too many armor bearers. No one carries my Bible. Um, it's not that heavy and I'm going that way. So, yeah. I mean, so, so we're, we're good in yeah. that part. With that said, there is this, this, this yearning for authenticity for real. When you go to YLC, it amazes me at your conference I can see LED screens. I can have my program on a flash drive. But in the middle of the worship service, you might break out into a hymn that resonates in the spirit. Yeah. How were you all able to unify this marriage between being rooted and being relevant? Wow. I, I, first of all, I love the alliteration. Let's start there. Let's start Let's there. Let's start there. Let, let's start there. <laughs> I'm feeling that as I am sealing this setup that you guys have, because this is phenomenal. I like all of this. I, I, copied, but, I copied it from you. I saw no, it. No, no, yours is better. You, you upgraded it. You innovated it. But we'll talk about that offline. I think that, that the relationship that you just laid out is essential. I think that it's necessary. And honestly, I think that it's a biblical format. When you talk about rooted and relevant, what I'm hearing is really uh, the importance of having um, a foot almost in multiple generations. Mm. Um, one of the things, just to be very transparent, I hope you all have shared this. One of the things that breaks my heart about our generation, yes, and really, I don't even know if I should minimize it to us because I think that every generation uh, does this to a varying degree. But it seems in so many instances that we feel we have to uh, diminish what came before us Woo! to fully step into all that yes. we're doing. We, we tend to think that we are the first generation to innovate. We are the first generation to come up with something new and creative without acknowledging that creativity is ever changing. Yes. It's the, it's, it's the same spirit. And I think that one of the things that God will bless, one of, one of the reasons we found it 
whilst he was was from a scripture in Malachi of all places. Most of us who hear Malachi, we only think, well, right. I'm God. You have robbed me. How? And tithe him and offer. It says other stuff than that, though. That's great. Necessary. But it says some other stuff. One of the things that it says, one of the most powerful verses, I believe, for my purpose is where he talks about in the last days, I will send my prophet mm. and he will turn the hearts of yes. the fathers to the sons and the hearts of sons to the fathers. I, I've heard that all my life. Mm. The Lord is going to turn the hearts of the fathers to the sons, sons of the fathers. But it was not until I read it that I understood. He says, I will send my prophet and he will turn the hearts of the fa fathers to the sons, sons of the fathers, which tells me, number one, this turning must be facilitated by somebody. Yes, sir. But then we never read the next verse where it says, lest I smite the earth with a curse. In other words, if this turning of hearts between fathers and sons, between old school and new school, between uh, Meslins and Chelsea boots, between skinny jeans and liturgical vestments. Yeah. If this turning of hearts does not take place, the downside is that God says, I will smite the earth with the curse. Mm. And so I'm looking at the, the church world. I'm saying, you know what? I think part of what we're seeing is the curse that has been released because we, we have not seen a turning of hearts. Mm. Yeah. Every every son thinks mm -hmm. that David and their father, their pastor is Saul. Yep. Every 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 father thinks that their children are all Absalom and trying to take over and not ready. And so you've got this perceived intergenerational beef. Yes. But I think needs to happen dealing with being relevant and rooted is I think of the story. Uh, in the New Testament of Jesus feeding the 5,000. Everybody in here, uh, you all have heard that story. If you've been to church, uh, through church, near church, next to church for any length of time, you know about the feeding of the 5,000. To, mm -hmm. to give a cliff note version, uh, Jesus tells them, the disciples, that is, go feed the people. They say, we don't have anything. The grocery stores are closing. drive through is shutting down. We got to let the people go. Jesus says, no, you feed them. They go in the crowd. They come back and they say, all we have, we found a little boy. And he's got two fish, five loaves. He's got a two piece and some biscuits. Mm -hmm. Jesus takes it. He blesses it. Y'all know what he does. Blesses it, breaks it, multiplies it, gives it away. It's a phenomenal story. So many lessons, so many principles. But here's the one that blesses me in the context of being rooted and relevant. Here's my takeaway, Pastor Chris. Tell me if this is, if this is wrong or not. What blesses me about it is that what the moment needed, the next generation had. But it was useless until the next generation submitted it to the older generation, because that's when the, the need of the moment was met. What I would say looking at our generation is that what the moment needs, Pastor Foster, yes, have it. Yes. The, technology. The, the, the whole pandemic has shown us the Internet is not the devil. Social yes. media is not, is not the devil. It, it has been our arc. So yes. it has been our art for the last three months. And we really don't know how much longer uh, it's going to be our primary mode of worship. What this situation needs, here it is. This generation has it. We know how to brand. We know how to build. We know how to do social networks. We're hosting watch parties. We know all of that. But what this moment also needs is for this generation to submit what we have yes. to the older generation because they're the ones that know what to do with it to make sure that the need is met. Come here, I've called the young men because they're strong. Yes. But don't forget that the old men know the way. Yes. And I think that the, 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 the relevant and rooted piece is necessary if we're going to save a dying world. Yes. Need, it's not either or. It's both it's and. Both and. Thank and you. The, the book of Acts gives us the recipe for revival. Yes, in sir. the last day, saith God, I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. Yes, sir. And young men will see visions and old men, and old men will dream dreams. I'd argue the most critical part. I don't know if we're going to have the Olympics this year. I wouldn't go. They um, moved it to next year. OK, the most you remember when you all hosted it in Atlanta, the yes, most critical part of a relay race is the transition. Yes, sir. The passing of the baton. Yes, if the person who's receiving it reaches too early, we can lose the whole race. Yes. If the person who's supposed to hand it off holds on to it too long, mm -hmm. we can lose the race. Yes, sir. It's imperative that they start running at the same pace and synchronize their step 
so it can be a seamless transition. Mm -hmm. What can we do as the body of Christ? Because when I come to YLC, I hear Bishop Lambert Wade Gates. Mm -hmm. I hear your mom. Mm -hmm. I also am introduced to voices such as Dr. Darius Daniels, mm -hmm. Apostle Brian Meadows, etc. What can we do as the body of Christ to make sure we don't lose that synergy between generations? You know, to just continue the, the, the relay metaphor, I think that what has to be done, number one, is we have to remember that we all have the same finish line. <laughs> let's, start, let's start there. Yes. But I think that the part of part of this transition and handoff is so difficult is because we, thank you, Lord, we end up fighting more over preference than principle. So it's not, we're not looking at it from the standpoint of how can we give. That was good alliteration, by the way. I've been following. Did you, plan it? Following. Did you plan the preference and potential? It, it, it just downloaded. Thank you, Ken. I ain't doing I'm, I'm, I'm with you. For, it's for preachers, alliteration is like getting extra coins in Mario Brothers. <laughs> Absolutely. It's the bonus. It's the bonus. You know, so, so <laughs> what I'm saying is instead of us looking at it from the standpoint of, how can we get those that don't know Jesus, mm. know Jesus, we end up getting lost on the preferences. Mm. I would prefer they get to know him like this. Yes. You would prefer they get to know him like this. I would prefer they get to know him in a sanctuary where all the lights are on. It's a full choir stand with robes. There are ushers with white gloves. And this is the only way you can get to know him. Yes. Well, no, I would prefer that they get to know him in a, in, in, a, in a club where the lights are down. There are no ushers. There are people outside with T-shirts that say, we're glad you're here. And they don't hug. They high five. Yeah. And when you come in, uh, the, the, the stage has lights and ain't no choir stand. And this is the only way you can get to know him. What we end up doing is we end up fighting. We're talking about a transition. Yes. We transition because we've lost sight of the finish line and we're so busy looking at our preferences and we're fighting to protect our preferences. Mm. Because what we tend to do, it's the same thing with music. Music is a great example. Yes. It's, okay, come here, last dance. Thank you. It's the same thing with sports. Do you know who the greatest of all time is? Huh. The greatest of all time is whoever was on top when you fell in love with the game. Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks. The, the, let's end the discussion right now. Yes. I was, there, arose a general, there, there arose a pharaoh that knew not Joseph. If you go back old enough, there are some old school cats that would tell you that Jordan's not the GOAT. Yep. They see Bill Russell. Bill Russell. <laughs> Bill Russell got 11 rings. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But what happened? Bill Russell fans died out. Yes. Now you got people. Jordan's the greatest. Of the, well, that's because Jordan was on top when you fell in love with the game. This is not to be uh, 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 combative or anything of that nature. But guess what? If time marches on, the fewer people that are alive that saw Jordan play, you're going to see more people say LeBron is the go. Absolutely. Guess what? If time marches on, there's going to be someone else after that because we tend to fall in love with the era we fell in love in. Yes, the music people would take this new this new music ain't nothing. You need to go to all that Migos down in Atlanta. I don't know yeah, what I'm I'm rap. Rap. You can't know what they say. You need to hear rap back in my day. First of all, rap back in the 80s was terrible. They were <laughs> talking. So I got up today and I bought myself a hat. That's not that's that's <laughs> you fell in love with it. Period. You that's when you fell in love with it. It's the same thing with church. Yes. If you came and fell in love with God in a sanctuary where all the lights were on and yes. the choir and they yes. marched down the center aisle yes. and they had an announcer for the radio broadcast. Yes. yes. You have a right. And there's nothing wrong with you because of this. But you have to be careful that your defense of your era does not come at the expense of alienating somebody else from experience. And I, I era. I think that's where you and I are blessed with this intergenerationality that we're able to have feet, a foot in both generation. I grew up in a particular apostolic context. Mm -hmm. I wore suit every single week to church, mm -hmm. um, choir robes. And to me, you can't tell me the ones with the two crosses on. Them. Oh, yes, sir. Um, the, the nurses and then the cape when you get done. Oh, the yes, sir. Uh, the, the, the cup. With the with the lid, oh, uh, yep. union curtain over the table, 
Here's mine. The pastor had a desk with an office phone on it. No, I'm going to give me an office phone. They're going to be connected to him. I'm going to have one. And when my pastor, Bishop Benton, would talk on it during service, I was like, there's some business transpiring Major right now. Things are happening. You couple that with the nurse who had the full regalia with oh, no yeah. degrees. No oh, degrees. Yeah. None but peppermint. If you sick, a mint and ginger ale. Yep. So I grew up in that context. With that said, I had to recognize at a certain point that I don't need to just exegete text. I have to exegete congregations. Yes, sir. And so right. when I recognize I live in California, when I recognize that people wear suits to work throughout the week, they may not want to wear one on Sunday. Mm-hmm. How can I? So it was an even... It was intentional, but it was something I had to pivot to. Now, here's the here's the cold part. I still like suits. Mm-hmm. I still like to dress up. Mm-hmm. I think it reminds me of Paul when he says, I became all things to all people so I can reach Christ. In my estimation, if your culture supersedes Christ, then your culture is too strong. Yep. I should be at a certain place where I should be able to feel Christ in the midst of any type of culture or context. Yep. With that said... This wasn't on my list, but it is in my purview. Uh, I'm often frustrated by how, going back to preferences, I can go to certain evangelical ministries and atrocities can occur and I will hear crickets and silence. Silence. I I can also go to certain, I'm going to get in trouble, charismatic context. Mm-hmm. And we will act as if God is synonymous with the beliefs of a particular political party. Yep. As if so Republicans think Christ is a Republican. Democrats yep. know when I go through Cone and the lynching and the tree that Christ is Republic is Democrat. I feel like it does the church a disservice when we try to limit the king of kings to a political paradox. How can we be relevant and prophetic, but not be so closely aligned where we alienate people from Christ? That's the million dollar question. And I think that it's necessary. And the only way we're going to get to that point is that we have to realize how much bigger Christ is than how, than how we painted him to be. We still see Jesus as, as the white man with the children on his lap on the back of the fan that the funeral home used to bring every Easter and and Pentecost Sunday, all right? We got to take him off the church fan. And actually, here's a novel idea. This Mm. is going to come in your mind in the comments. Let's actually read the Bible Mm. and to know the Jesus of the Bible. Because if we get to know the Jesus of the Bible, we would have to leave with the understanding that there's no way you can fit him in any political context. Yes, He's the Jesus that was social, or rather that was liberal in his social policy because he sat down with sinners sinners and and publicans. Yes. That's not a very conservative thing to do. Absolutely not. He was also conservative in his nature and that he was, he he did so many things to help people that were against the norm and the culture of the day. Mm. You can't put him in any one particular context. Mm. You could, he wouldn't be God anymore. Yes. He's bigger than our box. Yes. He's bigger than our, our, our uh, three point plans. And I think that the sooner we embrace that, yes. the sooner we can we can release him, dare I say, to be who he wants to be in our churches, in our cities, in our communities. When we look at him, you know what parties are, hmm. organizations, all of these, all of these structures, they're lenses. Yes. That's what they are. They yes. impact, they impact how yes. we see what we see. Yes. When I put these on, I see things a certain way. I see everything I'm looking at through this filter. Wow. This lens is a filter. When I put these on, I see everything I'm looking at through this filter. And if we would be bold enough to take our filters off, Woo. let's let's look at it for what it is. Then I think we would be better off across the board. I I I I could I could do this forever. Now I see how when I watch the preacher talk with all four of y'all, We're trying to cut it out. I don't know how long they let y'all stream. I, I, clearly, I feel like I'm binge watching. I, I don't want to. I don't want to get into that space. Listen, there is something that is dear to my heart, 
And that's not, I don't want my children to grow up and be in grief recovery because dad was married to ministry. Mm-hmm. That that's that's something that's big to me. That that church is an extension. For example, I, my parents introduced me to Christ. I'm still in love with Christ and my family. I yep. kind of want that for my children. Uh, before I came on tonight, my daughter gives me a Michelle Obama fist bump and said, "You're gonna murder it tonight, Dad." Now I didn't know if she should be reprimanded for using murder, but the context was correct, so I just went with it. So I was like, oh, "You're good." My point is that they have a natural love for Christ and ministry. When I look at YLC, one of my favorite moments, it's not the moments that occur on stage or the preaching moments. Mm -hmm. It's watching your brother work so hard. Mm -hmm. It's watching your dad sit and be a student. It's watching your mom take a microphone and take us all in. It's watching your sister sing a Christian contemporary song. Mm -hmm. There's a way that I don't think it gets enough credit of the way that you and your family have managed to navigate the space of family in ministry. I got a lot of young families who never saw it done before. Speak to how your family was able to accomplish being impactful in ministry and remaining close knit together. You know what? Um, I appreciate this question because I really think it has the potential to help a lot of people for that reason. One more time, y'all, you got to share this. You got to share this. Click share, click share. We, we hear in this conversation, I think that the most popular word that comes up is uh, the word balance. Mm. Uh, I think that a lot of people have really bastardized the whole idea of balance and taken it out of a biblical concept because I, I, I don't want to rock anybody's boat. But if we're going to be honest, no, and I've heard my father say this, nobody that's really in love with something is truly balanced. Mm. Michael Jordan, no balance. Nobody that's successful is truly balanced. Wow. If we're gonna be, this is this part people don't like to read. Mm. To be biblical, tell me what's balanced about Jesus saying, "Any man that love mother or father more than me is not worthy." Wow. There's nothing balanced about that. Wow. So here's the concept that I want to drop off, specifically what my family has utilized and, and you know to the glory of God, not lifting it as perfect at all. We're family just like you are. Families have issues across the board, but I'm thankful that we've gotten this part right. And I think that the approach, Pastor, is one of integration instead of balance. Mm. That Mark, George, and Sharon are diehard for the ministry is because from an early age, we understood this isn't mom and dad's church. Wow. This is our church. Yes. Don't, 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 don't miss me. Don't, don't dismiss what I'm saying and say, oh, that's nepotism. I'm not talking about it like that. I'm talking about ownership of responsibility. We understood from an early age, we couldn't spell it, but we knew we were Levites. Yes. We that God chose our family. Because let's never forget, God works with families. Mm. I am the God of Abraham. Isaac. And Jacob. Yes. God, God deals with generations. We, oh, we, we, we think in, in days, God thinks in decades. Yes. Uh, he, he has a plan for our families. And so we understood from early age that we were integrated. We never felt separated because our parents made sure they kept us along for the ride. Mm. They never presented church as a punishment. I've seen people, you know, right. if you don't do right, I'll make you go to church. No, please don't make me go. <laughs> what are you doing? What, what have you just done to your family and to their image of church if you equate it with punishment? Yeah. So I think that we have to focus on integrating our families in ministry. And this does not simply apply to those of you that are pastors or in senior leadership of a church. For those of you that are just simply believers and you want your family, your children to follow your suit, follow that path, you've got to make sure that you're integrating them in that experience. Here's a great example. Mm. While we're in quarantine, nobody is coming into physical. uh, I was, you know what? I'm hurt because I was supposed to be (laughs) at the rock. I almost got over it. I'm, I'm sad all over again. I was supposed. Was it like the week? It was, was it like the week. The week, before. Before. It was the week yes. before. I was supposed to be there at the rock, and and because of all of this, couldn't couldn't make it. 
But while we're watching church online, we're talking about integration and giving your children and your family that love for ministry. While you're watching the Rock Church Sunday broadcast, I know you're at the house, but let me say this. This Sunday, and this is not to in indict anybody or, or uh, you know, I don't know what you've done before, but do this this Sunday if you haven't done it before. Get the family up for church. Mm. Get the children dressed. Mm. We're not doing our pajamas. We, 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 we've been on phones and games and, I, and all of this. Yes. All, we're going to cut all that off right yes. now because yes. it's our time to be in the presence of God. This is our time as a family to worship God. This is our time as a family for God to speak to us. So you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna get up, we're gonna get dressed. We're not, we're not watching church in our pajamas this Sunday. We're not, we're not watching church on one screen and we got TV on another screen. No, no, we're gonna give God our whole attention as a family because we are people of God and God loves us and we love him. And this is what we do. This is who we are. What is that? That's integration. Yes. All of us are a part of this. This yeah. is not mommy and daddy gonna go to church. Y'all do what y'all want to do. Y'all can go to church, don't go, whatever. What, no, no, I, I refuse to raise children for hell. Yes, I yes. Refuse, yes. I refuse to, to, to claim to have all of this power and I don't do anything to pass it to the next generation. I, I have a friend, I'm gonna give it back to you. I have a friend um, uh, who is Jewish. And one of the things that he told me was that it, in the Jewish uh, tradition, one of the things that they take great pride and great, 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 great responsibility in as it pertains to their family and their children is that they have a, a, a mantra. They have several mantras that they reiterate to their children on an ongoing basis. And one of their prayers is that, God, don't let me die until I have passed a relationship with you to the next generation. What would happen for us, same sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost folk? If we had the mindset, God, don't let me die until I have passed a relationship with you to the next generation. Absolutely. We've got to focus on integration. Now, I'll say this and I'm done. I don't want to monopolize. But part of the reason my parents were able to, to, to do that with us, mm. because and I don't want anybody to feel a certain kind of way. I have an unfair advantage. My mother is a PK and my father is a PK. You want to make it worse? Both sets of my grandparents are PKs. <laughs> Can I make it worse? On both sides of my family, in the great grandparent category, I've got PKs. Wow. So what you're seeing is you're seeing hurt. Wow. Pains. Wow. You're seeing missed opportunities. You're seeing when I have children, I'm not going to do that. Wow. You're seeing all of this passed down to a point where we can kind of understand, okay, if this is going to work, they've got to know God for themselves but they might also feel like they're a part of this ministry endeavor. It's gotta be integration. Ooh, you took the conversation a completely different way because the moment you said PK, mm -hmm. I feel in my spirit, most people thought that that meant you had privilege and mm -hmm. didn't recognize the pressure that comes oh, yeah. with that in terms of how you make a mistake. It's, it's the parents' reputation, it's the church's reputation, but uh -huh. If you go bail out the other family out of jail, then it's all good. When their child gets in trouble, Pastor, the only verse they know is that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory. Yes. When you get in trouble, the only verse they know is that the wages of sin is death. <laughs> it's like, it's because because this is this is unchartered territory. Mm -hmm. I don't even think people recognize the pressure that ministers feel, pastors feel in the midst of a pandemic. Mm -hmm. Pressure to produce, yeah. pressure to pray, pressure to preach. Provide. To provide. Mm -hmm. I mean, those things become, and, and here's the other part, and not let the congregation feel those pressures yep. so they can enjoy it. One question, because I, I got I got like 10. I'm trying, not trying to monopolize your time. Do you have law and order tonight? What it was yeah, happening? We already did law and order. Wow. We did already. All right, cool. Because cool, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. The cup, the a couple of things I want to touch in terms of you at church when that day you were supposed to come to the rock. Total transparency. I was supposed to preach in Southern California. Mm -hmm. I trust you. Yes, sir. To leave our church with you. That's not just me, it's Pastor TJ McBride, countless others. It's a major There's a level of safety that we feel that you're not going to say anything 
bombastic, anything ad hominem, something I'm going to have to fix and clean. <laughs> yes. There's a way, and you're not going to try to just preach your best message. You're going to preach a message that is tailored for the house for that hour. Yes, sir. Where did you learn that? Man, uh, l- let me let me not get in trouble and do uh, what Hezekiah did when they asked him, how did you defeat the Babylonians? And he said, look how much money I have and look at my army. Yeah. Let me make that mistake. What Hezekiah should have said is it was the Lord's doing. Yes. What I'm going to say is I learned that piggybacking off of our previous conversation. That's what you get when you are submitted. Yes. You are a son because that what you just mentioned, that comes from sitting under the man whose office is on the other side of this yes. wall. Yes. Jamar Moore Sr. That comes from being um, not to promote myself, but being smart enough to listen to wisdom. Because yes. it is the wisdom of our pastors and our leaders, those of you that are blessed, especially those of you that are part of the Rock Church. If you listen to the voice that God has placed in your life to speak and give language to your next level, then that wisdom will provide opportunity. There's yes. safety in submission. And so safety I learned that wow. listening to the voice of leaders and having it ever present in the front of my mind, I'm not here uh, because of a YouTube clip, because I'm I'm this, because I'm all in it. I'm here because God put my name on that pastor's heart. Yes. And that pastor extended an invitation. A lot of times, not to make this a preacher's class, but a lot of times preachers get in trouble because they think they're there to impress people. People did not invite you. Ooh. I heard a story, you can like this one. Uh, Bishop Gates told a story of his late pastor, uh, the great Bishop Nehemiah Smith in Detroit, Michigan. And, and Bishop yeah. Smith was a very humble man, uh, very, very quiet. And he said that one day he had brought a speaker in and the preacher was preaching and, and he got up and he said, y'all think I'm here because the pastor invited me. I'm not here because Bishop invited me. I'm here because God wanted me here. They said, Bishop Smith said, let's see if God invites you back. (laughs) Because he misunderstood the moment. He was there at that pastor's invitation. And so a word of wisdom, when you go into another man's house, your job is to uplift that man or that woman in the eyes of the people. And let me say this, because I already know where some of your mind is. If you think so little of Mm. that pastor, Mm. That man, that woman, that you can't say nothing good about them, then you might not need to take that engagement. Wow. Because even, even when leadership is wrong, wow. you can't give me a biblical example of when God sanctioned someone else to uncover mm. even bad leaders. When I'm not trying to get caught up, but when David had saw dead to rights in the cave, Bible yeah. talks about that, he was behind him and Saul didn't know he was there. He yeah. could have ended his life. But he said, I dare not touch the Lord's anointing. Yes. He took a piece of his robe yes. it, and he ended up feeling bad about it because he said, what am I doing? He's wrong. God has lifted his spirit, but that's still God's anointing. Wow. So you always have to have enough wisdom and, and, and sense to not get caught up in your own press. I'm here because I'm a rock. No, 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 no. People don't have to invite you. I don't care how gifted you are. Because we all know people that can preach the paint off the wall yes. and are preaching to nobody but their house. Yes. Too difficult to deal with. They come in with selfish motives. They come in looking to hire people out from under the church or get people to be on their ministry team. And man, if, I had a, if I had a musician like you, Doc, ooh, I take wow. you all over the country. And here you are. They're playing for a pastor that has kept their lights on, keeps gas in their car, has talked them off the ledge of divorce. Yes. Don't, don't, don't do that. Wow. Wow. Because here's the part. People know about your strategy. And if you don't go to every master class that is available, there is some kingdom strategy, social media strategy. But I think one of your best kept secrets is your submission. Wow. I've seen you preach on the biggest stages. And literally, there's been sometimes when you'll say, Chris, can I call you back? I'm like, what are you doing? about to go out and preach on some of the biggest stages in the country. No name dropping. With that said, you'll say, I got to be back at FCC by this time so I can be here to honor my church. There are a lot of people who will see you host conferences, 
They'll copy your flyers. They will copy your look. Bruh. But I need you to give them some of the things that are worth copying, such as your study habits, your work ethic, your commitment to God, your submission. In essence, what I'm asking is they see the product and I think our generation is addicted to shortcuts. Yeah. Can you please walk them through the process that has produced this product? Man, um, to God be the glory. Um, and I say that seriously, no, no LOL, no JK. I'm dead serious. But I think that the, the process is really what you said. It's the submission. Um, man, it's, 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 it's so simple, but yet so deep, so profound. And it sounds sacrilegious to even say the Bible is right when it says this, because we, we know that. But it's so true. If you're not faithful over that which is another man's. Say it. Scripture asks, who will make you ruler over that which is your own? Mm. I think that, and, and just to be fully transparent, you set the tone for that. I had a conversation with a peer of mine once, and um, they were, they were you know, giving one of those kind of backhanded compliments. And fun fact, I, I know we're multicultural, but just let me educate you for, for those that may not know. When, when people of color say, man, you're better than me, let me help you. They don't mean you're better than me. Mm -hmm. They mean you're stupid. That's Absolutely. What they, Absolutely. That's what they mean. Let me just put that up. They, man, you're better than me. They don't mean <laughs> you're better than them. They mean you're stupid. That's what they're saying. 100%. Uh, yeah, just fun fact. Just, you know, thank you for coming to my TED Talk. But I, I was having a conversation with the man, people. you're better than me. Yeah, you're better than me. And I was, I, they were talking to me about, you know, when am I going to do this? And, you know, man, you, this was one of those situations. I was leaving an engagement and I had to leave uh, at like three in the morning to take an hour and a half drive to the airport to get back by like 8 a.m. so I could be in Sunday school at yeah. my home church. And they were, man, doc, man, you need to stay over and, and doc, man, just, yeah, I'll get you at so and so's church, doc. Da, da. No, man, I got I to be at Sunday school tomorrow. You gotta be at Sunday school. Oh, you must be your dad not gonna be there. You're gonna be preaching. No, he's gonna be there. I'm I'm not preaching. Well, what, what you gotta go back for, man? Because I, I, I have to be at I have to be at Sunday school. I, have, I I'm on the schedule to serve. I gotta be there. Oh, you teaching that you you over this you over the no I'm not over the Sunday school. You you doing like a special presentation? <laughs> no, I'm gonna be in class listening and taking notes. Wow. What, what are you talking about? And he, he, you know, he doc, you better than me. But what I told him was, I said, you know what? Here's the truth of the matter, man. I said, the reason that I'm bigger than you is because I don't mind being smaller than you. Wow. Whoa, Jesus. Did y'all hear what I said? I don't, yeah. I said, I don't yeah. know whatever. But I told him, because he was, man, you doing all this stuff? And you mean tell me you going to Sunday school? And you going to work the sound? Yeah. And the reason that I'm bigger than you is because I don't mind being smaller than you. Wow. I tell that story only to say, I, I tell that story only to say that when you tap into the power of serving, mm. let me, oh, wait, wait, hold on. Let me, thank you, Jesus. Let me mm. be serving without an agenda. Let's add that part. That makes a difference. I, I pause right there please. because my spirit literally left. When you said serving without an agenda. Yeah. Because a lot of people are serving only because if I just do this for three months, then I'm going to get, then I'm going to be on. And, and you can tell, you can tell when the, their clock is starting to tick in their mind because the service or the attitude by which the service is rendered, yep. it starts to shift. Yep. People and they only serve when the right, they only serve when the person with the power to promote can see them. Oh, a hundred percent. A hundred percent. It's not like people who treat the, the, the boss and the CEO, but disrespect the janitor and the server. And, yep. you, and you can see it in, in the kingdom of God, in, in the world at large, it's quite possible to do the right things with the wrong motives. Okay. Can, Cain and Abel show us that. He gave him a sacrifice. <laughs> I, what, what do you want? I gave you. Remember I brought the fruit? You yes. The fruit? yes. But you did it from the wrong place. You gave me that which was. E this is why when Dave, thank you. This is why uh, when Dave was getting ready to build God, he, he said, you know, how much do I need to uh, buy this land for? And the man said, no, no, I, I wouldn't charge you. He said, no, 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 no. I got to pay for it because I cannot give God something that didn't cost me anything. Yes. Yes. 
And what people don't realize is when you start serving, ministry is a life of serving. Yeah. Even in promotion, you're promoted to serve the people. Let's yeah. let's spin it to a business model. Yeah. If I'm going to be a CEO and advance my entity, I have to recognize that my entity is here to serve the people's needs, mm -hmm. not the business to serve my needs. Yeah. So that same mentality yes, that's birthed out of scarcity, low self-esteem, insecurity, that says I need my name and lights is the same mentality that blocks us from being effective in any area, any avenue of our life. Absolutely. Absolutely. And those CEOs, those uh, business leaders, those are the ones that don't last long. Mm. Mm. Those are the ones, the, and, and don't don't just minimize of those of you that are watching, don't just simply put that in the context of big business and Fortune 500s and all of that. This applies to, to the neighborhood uh, business people that you shop with and do business with. The ones that don't care about the customer experience. Yes. The ones that don't care about how you feel and, and what your experience, those are the ones that don't last long. Yes, yes. And, and, and we, gotta, we gotta get that principle because serving works on every level. And whether you believe it or not, you can serve your way anywhere. Wow, yes. I don't, I don't know, I don't, I don't come from this family. I don't know these people. I don't have this degree. Da, 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 da. You can serve your way anywhere. <laughs> I pray, I pray you all have hit the share button. I pray that somebody who feels like they're serving in secret yeah. has a renewed vigor, a renewed heart, a purified heart that isn't serving to be seen, but is serving because they were sent by God. It's their assignment. With that said, I could do this for a long time with you. It's natural. It's organic. Yes, There's a time when I've been on the wrong time zone and had to go to work. And <laughs> I got caught up talking to you about strategy, ideas, uh -huh. innovation. Yes, and sir. It was over. I, I got something I want to do. Mm -hmm. Rock family, go crazy on the cash app for me. I'm literally going to make his phone have a nervous breakdown. Oh, I'm send him an amount tonight that's going to make him feel like what just happened. Um, he, has, he has expensive taste in a lot of things. <laughs> Uh, watches, food, etc. So, uh, <laughs> learn from you. Don't do this. <laughs> let's, let's make him. Let's make him nervous. Text TRCBA seven seven nine seven seven. Do me a favor. We're gonna go back and read the comments. Type in your takeaways. What stood out for you tonight? How we can embrace this? It'll never be the same. How we can pivot? What stood out for you tonight? Give like crazy. I'm going to ask you to pray at the end, but I want to do something fun. Okay. People don't know. They might. In my estimation, your bag is lengthy. You got humor. You can preach. You can do a lot of stuff. I didn't tell you about this because I wanted it to be natural. I wanted it to be organic. Okay. Have you ever watched the show Pardon the Interruption? Uh, I've seen it. I've seen it. Okay. I used to watch it every day. Mike Wilbon, Tony Kornheiser. They would go. Oh, wait. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm, sorry. I'm, I'm tripping. PTI. Okay. Yes. Yes. I'm sorry. I mean, yeah. it's like, it's, oh, like absolutely. it's like devotion in the morning, Bible yeah. study, pardon interruption. I don't know what's happening for you. Yes, uh, sir. Okay. So I've been missing that show because there's no sports. And so I thought it would be fun. Okay. So you get, and we're going to go back and forth. Okay. I'm going to pick three topics. You pick three topics. Okay. Go back and forth. Pardon the interruption. The Rock meets YLC. Okay, you go first. I'm going first. First topic, the last dance. My, my, my immediate takeaway of the last dance, my favorite moment was when Michael Jordan is on the edge of crying, and they said how bombastic, how rude he was, and he said, those guys who are critiquing haven't won nothing. Haven't won I, anything. I could have ran around my whole whole couch in that moment. I feel that our generation, we pay so much homage to, to sensitivity and feelings, but we're not winning. That part drove me crazy. I also disagree with you. They should have renegotiated Scotty's contract and he should have got his money. Go. Scotty should not have signed a seven year deal, all right? When the owner of the team says, Scotty, don't sign this deal. 
<laughs> and you sign the, when your management says, Scotty, don't sign the deal, and you still, you still sign the deal, you don't get to complain that you didn't get the money that would have come with another deal. He That's was one of the best premier players. Lock him in. Redo that. Restructure he was. that. He was. And do you understand that they were able to pay the best player more money because Scotty signed that seven-year deal? <laughs> if you don't like the deal, don't sign it. But if you sign it, honor the deal you signed. All right. All right. What's your topic? Furthermore, furthermore okay. Uh, we're going to flip it. The governor of California just announced that he's issuing, or rather, I'm sorry, I believe the mayor of Los Angeles, your hometown, yeah. you're in the yeah. Bay now, but you're from LA. Don't let yeah. people, Long Beach, Inglewood, don't let people get confused, okay? <laughs> you hold it down for the LBC. Uh, the marathon continues. We can, do this. we can do this all day. What are your thoughts around the mayor of LA saying LA County is on lockdown through July? There's an initial there's an initial reaction to COVID before I, I don't I gotta let my heart speak for a moment. Mm -hmm. I've lost lives. There are people in our congregation who have lost lives. Yeah. Okay, so so there's a heart piece of it. In my estimation, the powers that be are devoid of compassion at this point. Their thought is lives are expendable. There was a governor who said it publicly. He said that there are some better things than living. Yeah, He just wasn't supposed to say it, but that mentality has been implicit for a long time. So for me, trust the spirit and science. So I'm saying if the curve hasn't flattened, mm -hmm. I applaud Mayor Keisha Lance Bottoms. I mm -hmm. applaud the mayor of Los Angeles. And at The Rock, I'm being very, I mean, I'm having withdrawals, like yeah. low key depression. I hug people at the end of service. I stay after for a long time. Like, that's real for me. With that said, I feel like until, because here's what's gonna happen. Imagine the trepidation if you go out too soon and there's another spike. So for me, I'm like, hold off and honor the science. What you think? I, I think that it makes no sense to force a reopen. Mm if it's only gonna set us up for a mandatory second wave. Here's what scares me. Yep. Flu season comes every year. That's why yep. I call it flu yep. season. It's coming. In a few months, it will be here. The symptoms overlap mm. with flu and COVID. So we're getting ready to be in a situation where we have all of these fears heightened and we're not willing to shut down long enough to let it run its course, to let it die down enough for it to be safe. I think it's foolishness. I think it's greed for those cities and states that are forcing to reopen. And I think that it's going to be scary, man. A hundred percent. hundred percent. All right. I'm going to be controversial. Next okay. topic. I just want to see your reaction because you're politically correct. And this is going to make you uncomfortable. Yeah. No, don't try to play me. I'm back down. Dead or alive, I'm gonna go first. Top three closers in preaching. Dead or alive. Well, God bless y'all. It's been great being with y'all. Uh, let me get notwithstanding, notwithstanding yourself, we already got that. My top three, and this is a lot of pressure. Dead or alive, and this is just closing. So much more substance. So many preachers that I love. I'm just saying, close for me. Closing. Dead and alive. Dead or alive. Doesn't Ooh. matter. Let me just give you three off the top of my head. Ooh. Bishop Paul Sylvester Morton. Okay. I'm also going with... Okay, 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 okay. Bishop Rudolph McKissick. Okay. And Bishop Brandon Pastor Mike McClure Jr. Jacobs. <laughs> I don't think that's allowed. Flag on the play. <laughs> that's a 15 yard mile. Can't do it. Run it back. I'll give you, I'll give you the first two. You okay, okay. okay. That's my three. No, nah, uh uh. The third one don't count. <laughs> there is nobody with that name. You got to make it as choose ye this day. Choose ye this day. Both. I can't. All right. Give me four. Three or four. 
Closers, dead or alive. Closing. Only closing. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna go old school because you know we've been in this rewind revival mode. So you can't you can't talk about closing in the black hooping tradition without putting Reverend C. L. Franklin on. The oh list. yes, uh, undoubtedly, undoubtedly. It's undoubtedly. just Thomas. You can't you can't you can't do it. You got to put Reverend C. L. Franklin on the list. We're talking about closers, dead or alive. Let me see. Today, closing. Closing. Very few people can shut a sermon down, shut a church down, like Bishop Lambert Gates. Oh, hundred percent. I gotta put him on the list. But it's put him on the list. But his cadence starts in the middle. Oh, it does. And he right, and when he does that ver voice inflection, it's like shock treatment. Night night. <laughs> See you in the morning. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna give you C. L. Franklin. We're going to verse. I'm gonna give you Bishop Lambert Gates. Ah, uh, closers. <laughs> you know what? You know what? Come here, Church of God in Christ. Uh oh, Bishop G. Patterson. Oh, Bishop Patterson on the list. Uh, Bishop Patterson can shut it down smoothly. And then um, you went with four. Yeah, you did go with four. You played me on that third one. C. O. Franklin, Lambert Gates. Yes. G.E. Patterson. Yes. And for my fourth card, closing it out. Let me see. Let's go. Uh, we've done Baptist. <laughs> done apostolic. You thought I was politically correct. We've done Baptist. We've done Apostolic. We've done Church of God in Christ. I'm going to flip it. I'm going to flip it. We're talking about closing. Yes. No, I'm not going to do that. I'll go, I'll go this route. I'll go this route. Bishop Joel Tutton. We'll go, with that. We'll go that way. We'll go that way. I throw a little non-denominational. Bishop Tubman. Throw a little non-denominational in there. He's a whole problem. <laughs> I I didn't know. This is a story. I didn't know uh -huh. that uh, Pastor Nissan asked for a ride to the airport, and we're in Detroit, and we're leaving, and word network thing, and okay. Bishop Tubman, he was like, can my guy ride with us? I'm like, yeah. Next thing I know, he's at Bishop Jake's twice. Shutting the whole thing down. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. Your last, your last topic. Ah, oh, man. You threw me off with that one. Uh, okay, here we go. I'm going to give you a dead or alive. We've done the preaching side. Dead or alive. Top three NBA players. Oh, that's dead or alive. Top three. Dead or alive. Top three. Magic Johnson is my favorite player of all time. Uh -huh. Los Angeles era. Give me that. Uh, MJ, obvious reasons. And my safe choice will be Kobe. Okay, that's your safe choice. I want to know the real choice. I know you got LA watching. I know. I know. Nah, I don't I think know. I will retract that. That's it. Okay. Who are your top three? If you don't say same, then you just you messed up. Same. I'm going to go same. I'm going to go same. I'm going to go same. Last one for me. Go ahead. Top three restaurants in the country. Oh, I'm going with this place in South Carolina called Magnolia. The I dude told me Oprah eats there regularly. It was a whole problem. There's one in Portland. I took my wife. I don't know the name of it. Uh... It can't be that good if I don't remember the name of it. Um, um, there's one in the Pacific Northwest, and and it'll come to me after. And my my last one will be, ooh. oh, New York, a place called Cecil's. It's in Harlem. Oh, it's 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 food off of the transatlantic African diaspora. What's your top three? Oh, nationwide. Okay, there's a spot. I'm gonna go to your area. There's a seafood spot in San Francisco uh, on the pier. It's in a little boat mm. called uh, Scomas. S C. Yeah, Scomas. On I know. Yep. One of my, one of my favorite experiences, not just uh, for the fresh uh, Bay Area seafood, but for the aesthetics. Every time I go, I see somebody. Uh, that you wouldn't see normally. Mm. Jerry Rice, what is going on? <laughs> go with Stomas. I love Stomas. Uh, there's a place on South Beach that I like to eat. Ugh. It's a steakhouse. It's not a chain. 
You have to know where it is to get there. And I cannot think, I know where it is, but I can't think of the name. What's Mine is called Toulouse Petit. My wife gave it to me. Toulouse Petit. It's like a Creole thing happening in okay. the okay. Seattle, Portland area. Okay. What city got the best food? Oh, that dude, we can't do that. I, I can't do that. It depends. It depends. Atlanta's up there. It, it, it Atlanta's food scene is is it's 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 no New York. It's no Chicago. Chicago's a problem. It's no Chicago. It's no New Orleans. New Orleans is a I'll good look. Honest. I'm gonna be honest. New Orleans has some, has some sleepers. It's no Houston, honestly. Houston is yes, yes. Houston, Houston's got some, and then okay, okay. Let's throw some we, we, on the West Coast. Um, Mr. Chow's is fun. Yes, uh, crustaceans is fun. But you know what my favorite spot in LA is? Huh. That nasty, dirty, amazing, undescribable cart you sent me to. On the corner of Crip Avenue and Blood Boulevard, I almost lost my life standing in line for a, a, a How was the food? tray. How was the food? Bro, that, that's, that's, that's my spot. That's my spot. When this quarantine is over, please know I have a list. I, 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 my mind is all right. I got a list of places I'm going just to eat. And one of the places I'm going, I'm flying to LAX and I'm Ubering to that little cart. There's my nephew. What's up, man? I'm over into that cart and I'm getting one of them. One of them. One that of them Caribbean cars. is called Grill Fresh. His yeah, name is yeah. Chef E Double. He caters for celebrities. He he's killing it right now. Killing yeah. it right now. Incredible. So when you next time you come to the bay, you're gonna be we're gonna go to the seafood place. Okay. Period. Period. Please, please. Elder Mark, I honestly. Thank you for agreeing to do this. I know your schedule is insane. Thanks for agreeing to do it on such short notice. Honestly, everybody we asked, they said, yeah, in five minutes or less. That means a lot to us. Yes, sir. I mean that. I mean that. On the way out, last words that you have for the Rock family and close us out in prayer and anything you want us to know about that's happening in YLCN. You know, I I'm going to pick up with my closing remarks where, where you left off. I think it's no coincidence that you would say uh, that everybody you asked said yes within five minutes. Now let's let's put that in perspective because mm -hmm. I looked at the flyer and I uh, I felt like a nurse at a doctor's convention. Okay, mm -hmm. you've got Dr. R. A. Vernon, who is a pastor to pastors, one of the most innovative, progressive ministry voices in a generation. You've got Elder Kerry Turner, who is uh, the the youth pastor at America's most progressive, youth yeah. group, culturally aware woke church, New Birth under Dr. Bryant. Yeah, we've got Pastor YPJ, who is a, just an interdenominational, mm. intergenerational. Just mm. uh, God, he has a hand in every circle, every sphere, doing amazing things. Mega church there in South Bend, and so for these kind of people to hear or rather receive an invitation from the Rock Church Bay Area. Pastor Christopher Foster, for them to receive that invitation, let me put this out in your spirit. Everybody that's watching that may not know, preachers and ministers have been getting five times their normal request during quarantine. Mm. Everybody thinks they're at home with nothing to do. It's not true. Uh, many of them are working, trying to get things together, but the requests have been crazy. Mm. So for people of that caliber, that ilk, to say in five minutes, oh, I'm coming, I'll do that, I'll log in, I'll change stuff. Mm -hmm. Jimmy Rock Church Bay Area. What that is, is a testament to the regard and the weight and the position that God has given your church and your pastor yeah. in the earth, in this season, in this generation. Let me just be very clear, since he asked me what, and he won't say this, so I'll say it. Pastor Christopher Foster is a Noah and the Rock Church is an ark. Mm -hmm. Okay, We're going to end the conversation the way that we started it. What God is doing through him and through his wife and through their leaders and the Rock Church family, you, the Rock Church family, what God is doing in and for and through you is something that the Bay Area needs now, but mm. they have no idea how much they're going to need it in a minute. Mm. Uh, and so uh, let me just lend my voice for whatever it's worth, just to say how honored I am to be connected, uh, to be a part of this family. I've been saying it. 
Y'all gonna believe me after a while. This is my Bay Area church. Uh, I can call your pastor with ideas, with questions, and he gives sound advice, sound wisdom. And if he's feeding me like that from a distance, you all are such a blessed people. God thinks highly of you to give you a pastor, Christopher Foster. So I want us to pray and thank you for those of you that are putting your, your takeaways in the comments. Make sure you share this even at the end because somebody in a different time zone needs to see this tomorrow, needs to see this later tonight uh, because I think that, that this conversation uh, has been impactful. So let's pray. And even as you have put your uh, takeaways in the comments, I want you to also put those prayer requests in there because the yes. Team has ministers and leaders yes. standing by. This is a church that does not simply care about seeing you in a physical building. You are not just a number and, and a butt in a seat. If no. I can that way. This is a ministry and you matter in yes. this church. And so we're praying with and for you. And let's just believe even in this crazy season of social distance, let's believe and be reminded that there is no distance in the spirit. Mm. No, you can't get closer than six feet to somebody else, but God, can get right where you are and touch you at the point of your need. Can we pray together, yes. Facebook? Can we pray together, Rock Church family, even all of our friends that have tuned in tonight from around yes. the country and around the world? Let's yes. believe in prayer right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you tonight. We love you. We honor you because you have touched us. You have blessed us. And it is a privilege to feel your presence, even through a screen. God, we thank you. For the gift you have given us in Pastor Christopher Foster, for the gift you have given us in Lady Nakia Foster, for their wonderful children, for every leader of the Rock Church, God, for the gift that is the Rock Church. We thank you, God, even for this venue, this yeah. opportunity, this platform to discuss and, and share ideas on tonight that would provoke thought and trigger ideas. We thank you, God. We now ask that you will look down from heaven and see every need in the lives of your people, Hallelujah. every request, God, spoken and unspoken, every every sickness, every ailment, every emotional wound, every fear, mm. every anxiety, God, everything that, that, that is hurting us in places that people don't even know we're hurting, yeah. we give it to you tonight. God, yeah. we know that you care for us. We know that, that because your eye is on the sparrow, we know mm. you're watching us, God. You are touched with the feelings of our infirmities. And so God, we intercede on behalf of our church, in the name of Jesus. our families, our in the name of Jesus. those that are being uh, uh, challenged and, and, and put in tough positions and yes. suffering with this pandemic. We yes. lift them up right now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, God, and believe that you're giving us fresh vigor, Hallelujah. fresh innovation, fresh creativity. Yes. God, yes. reminding us that you, Christ, are the center. God, you're giving us the right people to collaborate with. Yes, God. That's the right partnerships and strategic resources and alliances yes. so that we can be and do all that you have Jesus. for us, even in the midst of a pandemic. We thank you, Jesus. We give you the glory. Hallelujah. We thank you that you're giving us good Hallelujah. news even in the midst of a bad time. Yes, God. In Jesus' name that we pray. Jesus' name Amen. we pray. Amen. Elder Mark, we are so grateful. Yeah, Have my a brother. good night. And yes, sir. Please be encouraged. And anybody who's not following Elder Mark Moore, make that happen. Anybody who's not following the Young Leaders Movement, make that happen. Praise break. If you are tired of the pandemic, yeah. praise break is coming to Atlanta. Yes. We love you, bro. Thank you for everything. Thank you for real. Rock Church family, I love y'all. Praying for y'all. I'll see you next time, man. See you next time.